So when work is done by non-conservative forces, that means that the energy of the system does change, and this often involves the production of non-mechanical energy. So we all know what mechanical energy is. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and write down what you think the definition of non-mechanical energy is. Well, if you're not quite sure, let's think. Mechanical energy, remember, is the sum of kinetic energy and all forms of potential energy. So what's non-mechanical energy? Well, it's just not those things. It's not kinetic energy, and it's not potential energy. There are plenty of other forms of energy, and I'm sure you know a whole bunch of them. So right here in our notes, we're going to create a chart listing all different types of these non-mechanical energies. So first column here is type of energy. Middle column, where it comes from. The last column says, so it's really, and that'll make a little more sense once we get to it. Okay, so you probably have some ideas of some of the different types of non-mechanical energies. Why don't you just go ahead and fill in the left-hand column there with some of those types of energy that you know about, leaving some space in between so we can talk about where they come from and, you know, really what it breaks down to. So usually one of the first types of non-mechanical energies that students identify is heat. We're all familiar with that as a form of energy. So where does heat come from? Well, some students get a little bit confused about that. So often students say, well, you know, maybe like when you rub your hands together, you generate heat from the friction. So let's break that down. What's actually happening at the subatomic level is that the atoms of one object are colliding with the atoms of the other uh, object, and that generates heat. So we're really going to say it comes from collisions among particles. But of course, if these particles are moving. That means that really it's a form of kinetic energy. It's just that it's at the subatomic level. You can't see it at a microscopic level. And so we call it a non-mechanical form of energy. If instead we think about maybe like a system of gas particles, maybe one part of the, of the system, the particles are moving very fast, which means they're at a high temperature. And somewhere else in the system of particles, they're moving relatively slowly. That means that they're at a low temperature. And so when these particles collide with each other, there's a transfer of energy. The fast moving particles collide with the slow moving particles and they give up some of their energy. That flow of energy is what we call heat. But again, it's happening at a microscopic level, so it's a non-mechanical form of energy. If a large-scale object is moving, that's what we call just regular old uh, kinetic energy, the mechanical form. Okay, then another uh, type of non-mechanical non energy that students often identify is sound. So where does sound come from? Well, especially if you are one of the musicians in class, you, you know that to generate sound, generate music, something has to be vibrating. And so really, it comes from vibrations of particles. Sometimes you can see the vibrations happen, but lots of times you can't. Like, you know, if you just, maybe, for example, clap your hands together, well, that means that the particles of your hands are actually vibrating, but you can't see that happening. Again, it's at a, a subatomic level, a microscopic level, but they have to be vibrating. And so what does that sort of sound like? Yeah, it's a form of kinetic energy. Again, it's just at the microscopic level, so it's a non-mechanical form of energy. Most times you can't see these vibrations happening. Another type of non-mechanical energy that students often identify is chemical. So this is the type of energy you get from food. Where does it really come from? It comes from the relative positions of atoms and molecules. There's energy stored in the bonds between atoms and molecules. And then, for example, when you ingest food and then you digest the food, you're actually breaking those bonds or releasing the stored up energy inside. So we talk about position, we talk about the energy being stored up. What does that kind of sound like? Right, it's a form of potential energy, but again, it's at the microscopic level. You can't see these particles, so it's a non-mechanical form of energy. The next type of energy students identify, not going in any particular order, would be light. Now, light comes in many, many forms, and so maybe you know some of those forms. Why don't you just go ahead and pause the video and write down some of the types of light there are. I can never predict exactly what order we're going to go in, but for some reason, usually one of the first types of light students identify is ultraviolet or UV light. And if you didn't know what that was or you didn't identify that one, maybe that will sort of jog your memory with some of the other types. Maybe at this point, you do want to pause the video and write down some of the other types of light, the other forms of light. Usually after students identify ultraviolet, the next one is often infrared or IR. And then going in no particular order, there's gamma x-rays, microwaves, radio, and there is a seventh one. This is one that maybe students overlook because maybe it's too obvious, although some of you may have identified it as visible. These are all forms of light or forms of what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. And later on in the year, we're going to do a whole unit about this. We'll go into much more detail about them.
let's talk about where these types of energies come from. So you're talking about, for example, visible light. Well, you know, normally in class I would ask you, well, where do we get light from? And hopefully you don't overthink it, but someone's obviously going to say the sun. But then I would ask, well, do you actually know what's going on inside the sun? And usually someone in class knows that there's something happening inside producing light, and that is a nuclear reaction. And we're not going to get into the details about that. We'll get into that much later on in the year, what's actually happening in nuclear reaction, but that's what's producing light and all these other types of electromagnetic radiation in a star. Then, of course, I might ask you, well, where else do we get light from? And usually someone says, well, from like a light bulb or a lamp. That's true, of course, right? Now, I'll tell you right now, there's no nuclear reaction happening inside a light bulb. Otherwise, every single time you turn the lights on, there'd be boom, you know, a mushroom cloud, tremendous amounts of energy. That's not what's happening. So pause the video and see, do you know what's actually happening inside, for example, the filaments of a light bulb or the gas of a fluorescent bulb or even the flame of a fire? If you've never really thought about it, usually at some point someone says, well, maybe it has something to do with electricity. And while uh, electricity is a form of energy, that's not really the mechanism for what's happening here. Maybe the electricity uh, energy transforms to light, but the actual mechanism is that there are particles inside and they're accelerating. Maybe some of you have taken chemistry before know something about the energy level inside the atom. The electrons are zipping around and they get excited, they get extra energy, they go to what's called a higher energy level, and then when they drop back down to a lower energy level, they give off light. And that's what's happening. Really, when they change energy levels, there's a change in motion. And of course, in physics, we know any change in motion is an acceleration. And so the other way that light is produced is by accelerating electric charges. Now, it's okay if at this point you don't really know what an electric charge is. We'll go into much more detail about that later on in the year. We'll talk all about it. But for now, just know that when these objects accelerate, either speed up, slow down, or change direction, they radiate, they emit light of some form. One of these types here shown in the left-hand column. And so what does it really sound like? Well, if they're accelerating, it sounds like they're moving, so it sounds like it's kinetic energy, but it turns out that's not actually true. When these objects accelerate, speed up, slow down, or change direction, they radiate or they emit the light. They actually lose the energy, and so um, they don't have the energy anymore. And so it turns out light is actually in a category all by itself. It's unlike any of the other types of light. And again, later on in the year, we'll come back to this idea. We'll talk much more about it. One of the other types of non-mechanical energy students usually identify is electricity. We did just mention that before when we talk about light. And so you probably know what electricity is. Usually when I ask him, say, that's uh, the movement of electrons. Well, that's certainly one thing that could produce electricity, but more generally, it's the flow of charged objects, electrically charged objects. It can be electrons, but it could be all sorts of other things. And later on in the year, we'll do a lot of work in electricity, so we'll talk more about it. But these charged objects are flowing. So, of course, what does that sound like? Right. It's a form of kinetic energy. It's just, again, it's on the microscopic level. You can't see these particles moving. So it's a non-mechanical form of energy. And while there are all sorts of other types of energy, usually the last one that students identify is nuclear. So where does nuclear energy come from? Well, it comes from the relative positions of subatomic particles. But when I say position, what does that sound like? Yeah, it's really a form of potential energy. The particles inside the atom have some sort of energy stored up inside, and then when you break those bonds or you form other bonds, uh, there's an exchange of energy at the nuclear level, at the subatomic level, at the microscopic level. It's things you can't see, so it is a non-mechanical form of energy. And so we see really all types of energy really break down into either kinetic energy, energy of motion, potential energy, energy of position, or some form of light, electromagnetic radiation, which is totally different from all the other types.